my son Kevin Wright is in uh, fourth grade here. And believe it or not, they did not think the third or fourth graders would be interested in hearing what a CPA does. So it's hard, hard to imagine. So, but I'm um, here to tell you a little bit about what being a CPA is like. So I'm going to ask two questions, one of which I may have known the answer when you're a your age, and the other, there's no way I knew the answer. So first off, who here knows what CPA stands for? Certified Public Accountant. There you go. That's the one that may, may be a 50-50 shot that I would have got the answer to that when I was your age. Um, the other question, there's no way I would have known. What does a CPA do? Does anyone have some ideas on what CPAs do? Surely, yes. surely because of accountant, it might be in a bank or something like that? They, CPAs work in banks. They may help banks. But that's not exactly what they do. They do people's taxes. That's a big thing that we do. Prepare tax returns, income tax returns usually. There's a whole mess of returns. But the most common ones we work on are income tax returns. The basic thing we CPAs do is we prepare financial statements. We work with financial statements for an organization. And in a way, a tax return is almost a form of a financial statement. What we're trying to do is figure out how an entity is performing financially. And it doesn't need to be just a business. Every organization of a certain size has to have accountants involved in it. Whether it's a business, whether it's McDonald's or the Verizon store, they need to know that the money that they're charging in is going to cover all the costs that they have. But all organizations need accountants. You can be working for the NFL, which the NFL is actually, the NFL itself is actually a nonprofit organization. They need to know that the money coming in will be more than the money going out. Governments. City of Birmingham, the city of Detroit had some accountants that they weren't listening to, and that's kind of one of the ways that they got into the situation that they got. There was there was all kinds of information years ago that the money coming into Detroit wasn't matching the money that was going out every year, and that's why they're going through a bankruptcy process right now. So you can make the case that maybe had they listened to the CPAs they were working with, they would be in a little bit better position. So that's basically what CPAs work with. We work with financial, the financial measurement tools of an organization. We help them determine what amount of tax they need to pay and how to best structure arrangements so that they don't pay any more tax than they have to. And another major thing that CPAs do is they help organizations make decisions, make financial decisions about their what they're working on. Like, could someone give me a definition of what accounting is? When you hear the word accounting, oh. other than having your eyes glaze over. Yeah. Like accounting for something. Like if I was held accountable for like where my phone goes. Okay. I would be like responsible for it. That's a really good that's a good use of that word accounting, because that's what accountants work with is trying to figure out to hold people accountable for the, the money transactions that are going. Yeah. So when you handle money, I mean, that's always what I saw. Yeah, and actually, it's almost the opposite. In, in general, you don't want the accountants handling the money. The accountants keep track of the money. And typically, when we have set things up, when we help an organization set things up, you don't want the same person that's counting for the money to be holding the money in their hands. That's kind of a recipe for trouble. And that's the third thing that CPAs work with. They work with trying to limit the amount of fraud that goes on in businesses. To, so many of the ideas that you see in, in various businesses that are set up in terms of like the way cash registers work, the way um, the, maybe a ballpark keeps track of who's coming in and out. Those are things that were designed probably by CPAs to make sure that businesses aren't having money, having people attend events without paying, or having assets stolen from the organization. 
So I like to think of the accountants as sort of the scorekeepers of a business. If you think about the, the Tigers played a game yesterday. Yeah. Who they play? The Astros? Yeah, yeah. Right. So if you went to the game, let's assume the scorekeepers are like the accountants. All right? So if you didn't have scorekeepers, if you were just watching the game, you would see both teams had some good pitches thrown, some bad pitches thrown. Both teams got a number of hits. Both teams made some good defensive plays. But how would you know whether whether the teams accomplished what they were trying to do, which was what? Wins, or more runs than the other team. So the accountants are the scorekeepers. I'm not just talking about the person that keeps track of how many runs are being scored, but a whole series of other statistics are being kept track of to help the managers on each team figure out how to play the game best. So they're keeping track of the number of pitches the pitchers throw. They're keeping track of the batting averages of the players. All of these stats are, are gathered up and form a series of accounting, really, for a baseball game that will allow managers to figure out who to play where, it will allow the owners of the teams to figure out how much they, they need help in various areas. And without a way to be tracking all that information, it would be really hard to tell how your team is doing. Think of the scorekeepers at a baseball game as being very similar to the accountants in a business. So what are some examples? Let's walk into a business that, that we all have had dealings with. Let's take a McDonald's restaurant. So I'm not talking about the McDonald's world headquarters outside of Chicago. Let's just take the McDonald's restaurant we're going in. Pretty easy to figure out the revenue, but where does, their, where does the money coming in come from at McDonald's? Right. Come in, buy your salad, you buy your hamburger, your french fries. I'm making myself hungry here. But that's the money coming in. So McDonald's has to charge enough money so that there's something left over at the end of the day. What are the expenses that a typical McDonald's restaurant would need to incur? There's some obvious ones. Food. Exactly. They gotta pay the, all the people that are working there. They gotta not only pay their salaries, they have to pay payroll taxes towards their retirement, they have to pay a portion of their health insurance possibly, okay? That's a major expense of an organization like McDonald's. What other expenses might a restaurant have to incur like McDonald's? Electricity. Exactly. They've got to, they've got to run that facility that's, that they're in. They've got to pay for, the, pay for the electricity, pay for the heat, pay for the air conditioning in the summer. Okay? All right, what are some other, what's, the, what's another obvious expense that they have? Food. Pardon me? Rent, exactly. They may or may not own the building that they're in, so they'll need to pay, they'll need to pay rent for the facility they're in. We're missing a real obvious one. The food, exactly. So they've got to, they've got to pay for the raw food, the hamburger buns, the lettuce, the the um, french fries, the frozen fries, all that stuff. What else might there be that they've got to figure out? Taxes. Exactly. They have to figure out the taxes that they that they owe in terms of the difference between what they took in and what they spent. That becomes another expense. What's another thing that you see all the time when you flip on the television, listen to the radio? Advertising. That's a huge expense for a company like McDonald's. Okay? They also have to pay a share of profit out to all of the people that own McDonald's. McDonald's is publicly traded, so they have to pay dividends to keep investors interested in buying their stock. So someone, and that someone is going to be a, probably a room full of accountants, probably many of which are CPAs, Someone has to figure out how all of those costs are going to get spread out and how much they need to charge for their food to make sure that they not only cover those costs, but leave enough of a profit left over so that there's interest in investors. And that's one of the major things CPAs work on, is trying to help businesses measure 
how they're doing against the goals that they set up, and how to plan for the future in terms of how to improve their business practices. Okay, so let's go through the three letters that make up the CPA and talk to you real quickly. We've talked quite a bit about the accounting side, the certified public account. The first letter is certified. So to become a CPA, there's really three things you have to do. If they have a college degree, and it's a four-year bachelor 